Do you want to track every activity that is happening in your application? Is there an audit requirement? It is quite possible that you are building an enterprise level application and you need to track every activity that is happening on the application and then show them in a list so that the admins are aware of what is happening on the application, right? And today in this video, I'm going to address this specific functionality. In the CRM that I'm trying to build, I want the ability to track every action that is happening with most of my models, for example, the contacts, the companies, the deeds, and then have a simple UI which is able to not only show me the activities across the application, but also activities which has happened to individual entities, for example, activities of one particular deal so that it is easy for me to understand what are the different things that went through for that particular deal. So without wasting much time, let's get started. To give you an idea of the thought process that I had, I have noted down certain aspects of my requirement. So I'm saying that every event inside the application should be tracked. So obviously this is where, um, as I said, I will be tracking every event and storing them into the database. Now, because I have something in mind, the first thing which logically makes sense is to see if there is an already package available in the community which can kind of do the job for me. And Spatty, as always, has something for us. And today we will see how we can implement the Laravel activity log to get or rather to address such requirements in your application. To get started with, I would first install this composer package. So maybe just copy this, go over here and paste. So it will do the composer require, it will update my composer JSON, the logs files and stuff like that. Okay. And then obviously I need to publish the migration and I would also need the config. So they are two different commands. It is copying the table. Okay, there are three tables it seems and the config file as well. So let me add that as well. All right, so we have published the migrations. We have published the config file. Why don't I do PHP artisan migrate? It says that activity log table exists and yes, it would because I tried it before creating the video. So I will do a clean installation and again, it is creating a problem. Maybe something is wrong. What I will do is just delete all these tables. Okay. And I'll just run this once. No need to worry about it. I'll get all the data as well because the seeders are in place. And with that, I'm on the dashboard. Okay. Now, if I refresh my database, you will see that I have a new table called activity underscore log. And the understanding is that every activity data is going to be logged in this particular table. So how does it um, structure? So it has an ID, obviously the log name, we need to understand what the log name does. There's a description, subject type, event, subject ID. Okay. So I'm assuming that subject type will be something like the entity type. Uh, for example, if I'm updating a contact, maybe the subject type will be the contact model or something like that. And the ID of the subject will be here. Causer type, obviously I am under, I'm here to understand that it would be the user and the user's IDs here, properties, some JSON field. I think this is um, something to do with you know, how uh, this package basically allows us to do a before and after kind of thing. I think it's in their main documentation. Right, so calling activity changes shows me the old 
and the new attribute. So I'm, I'm assuming that's how, you know, that's why the JSON data is being stored, um, batch UID and stuff like that. So let's try and do something with it. Um, we can go into the docs first and look at how the installation is done. Now I'll show you from the documentation, although I know that because I would want you to understand how things are set up and what to refer. Okay. So we can do quite a few things. We will see that later, but at least let's get to a situation where we can run it. Okay. So we have done this. We have migrated and these things are done. Um, where was it? I think the basic one is logging model events. This is what I initially started with. And it says that the package can automatically log events such as when a model is created, updated and deleted. Well, that's exactly what we wanted, right? So how do we do that? To make this to work, all you need is let your model use this trait. Fair enough. Let's just do that then. So I'll go to my contact.php and I have the trait called logs activity. So I'll just do logs activity. Okay. And it is complaining that it doesn't implement the method. This fair enough. I'll just add that. No big problem. Um, and it expects the array to be of type log options. So why don't we do that log options? And so obviously we need to return log options and then defaults. Everything is in the documents. So no need to worry. And here it is log only, which means we do have the ability to either do a wildcard star or I can only track certain fields. Now the star is quite obvious. Why don't we do only a few fields? So log only. Okay. I'll just format it a bit. And what do we want to log? Or rather, what do we want to track? We have contacts. So the name, email and phone number is definitely something which I want to track. So name, email, phone number. With that done. And I think I need to do the arrow and not the brackets <laughs> as the next line. Okay. This is done. So what do we have? I have the trait over here. I have this function which is defining what I want to track. And now if everything is correct, what will happen is I'll just try to refresh and let me create a contact first. So John Doe, I think that's the obvious choice, right? John Doe at gmail.com. This is my phone number create. I can see it over here. Now, if I go to my database and look at this, I can see that I have ID as one, which is fine. Log name. It's default. We need to understand what that log name is a bit later, but uh, maybe in the next video. Description says created. Okay, this is fine. Um, we have subject type, and as expected, this is the, uh, you know, the namespace of the model. So in here, I'm saying that the current model in question or in context is the contact model. Event is created. And the subject ID is 51, which means the contacts ID is 51. Causer is type user and causer ID is one. Properties, well, it doesn't have an old because it's got created. Because it got created, why don't we edit it and see what is happening? So I'll click over here, John Doe, John Doe the 10th. Okay maybe something like that. And then I'll just refresh and I can see there is one more entry. The description says updated. The model is same. Event is again updated. Subject ID remains the same. 
causal type, causal ID, but the properties have changed and let us understand what happened. So we have old, this is the previous model, this is the new model and I think I'll need a diff library um, to show it in a better way, but obviously I can do an array diff and get only the fields which have changed and it will be kind of sufficient for me to show the exact thing that got changed or I can do a GitHub style, you know, a before and after kind of a thing. I'll have to see what UI works best, uh, but I can understand what it is doing because I think it's the updated hook where the old value and the new value is available and it is basically storing it. Okay, this is a good starting point, I would say definitely because I am able to log literally everything about a model with just how many? One, two, three, four, five, and this one, six lines of code apart from just installing the package and you know uh, adding a few things here and there, right? The migrations. So everything is set. And, and honestly, this is a big thing if you want to have monitoring or activity monitoring on your application because this will give you a very clear understanding of what is happening inside the application. And the one more use case which is very interesting is something like activity log. And in this video, I would like to try this out, show it to you before we finish this one because other things we will definitely cover in subsequent videos. So we have a helper function available called activity and I can do log. So let's see what happens there. And I need to run it somewhere obviously. And my feeling is what I can do is inside filament, I have contact, um, pages, create contact. I have some mutation over here, right? Okay, this is create notification. Mm -hmm. Maybe I'll add it over here right now. So activity, log, notification sent, sorry for contact created, something like that, okay. Pretty random, but I think it is enough to understand what happens, okay. Now obviously I need to create one more contact over here. John Doe is done, so maybe Jane Doe, the third, oops, that's two. Okay, uh, jane at gmail.com, that's fine. All right, and now if I hit create, I should have two log entries. One is basically the creation of Jane Doe, which Jane Doe the three. Um, let me refresh, and yes, I have one event which is created, and then I have a notification notification sent for contact created. So whatever is in here comes as the description, right? And the event is null. So certain things are obviously not available. It has still captured the user who performed the action, which is very, very important. I think this is a great thing because obviously if some event is happening, I should be aware who created the event. Even if it is not directly related to any model, it is important to know what happened and who created that event or who was the actor, subject maybe, okay? Um, so yeah, this is definitely um, something which I was really impressed with and uh, it saved me a lot of time, exactly what I wanted and I have few more functionalities to work on. So yeah, this is what I wanted to cover in this video. It is very easy to use this package and keep a track of what is happening in your application. Yeah, that's about it. If you like this video, then do click on the thumbs up icon and don't forget to subscribe to my channel.